Hey folks, today we're going to be talking about Ride the Wild Turkey by Daryl Anger. So I guess I should say a happy Thanksgiving to all of my American viewers and a belated happy Thanksgiving to all my Canadian viewers. Now, if you're more into like Friendsgiving or Turkey Day or the great American tradition of eating a bunch of food and playing tunes with your friend, I'm into that too, so happy that to you. So here's the thing, for a lot of bluegrass bands, it could be hard to alter your set list to include a bunch of holiday favorites depending on the season. So for instance, in October, you might do a really poorly planned Monster Mash cover. <laughs> You know, and during December, you can do Christmas Time to Come In or you can turn Sleigh Ride into a fiddle tune, whatever, I don't care. But during November, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna perform all of Alice's Restaurant? This song is called Alice's Restaurant, and it's about Alice in the restaurant, but Alice's Restaurant is not the name of the restaurant. And that's where Ride the Wild Turkey comes in. It's a fiddle tune with no words that isn't even really technically a Thanksgiving tune, so you have to explain it to the audience, and they don't really care. It's instrumental anyway. It's perfect. <laughs> Now, I'm sure all of you know, I normally don't do videos where I just teach a fiddle tune, but I thought we'd give it a shot anyway. Just like always, go to my website, LessonsWithMarcel.com, and there you can get the tab for free. We've actually done a bunch of updates to the website, so it should look new and exciting to you. Traffic is through the roof, so thank you so much all the people that have already visited. All right, let's get that tab on the screen and let's take a look at Ride the Wild Turkey. If you've been here for a while, you may notice that the music looks different. Normally I have the sheet music up above. I'm taking it out for this video just to see if anyone says anything. If you miss the sheet music, please let me know and I'll add it back in. I've also written in all of the pick strokes, which is something that I hope to do a lot more. So looking at the A part first, you may notice that it doesn't say A part, it says intro. That's because the form of the song is kind of interesting. That may seem a little confusing, but if you listen to a couple versions of the song, it'll make more sense. It's just kind of a cyclical nature of the tune. The very first time, you kind of get C, A, B, C, and then the breaks start, and every single one of them is A, B, C. So if that makes sense to you, let's start playing it. If I'm looking at the very first measure, the first note is a quarter note. It's third fret on my B string. I have a down stroke. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up. I'm playing in first position, which means that my index finger is first fret, second fret, third fret. Anytime I see a one, two, or a three, I know which finger is going to play it. Now if you go back and watch my performance, you may see me using some funny fingers. That's just because I filmed this video real quick and <laughs> I didn't clean up my fingering very well, but that's okay. I'll try to show you all of the uh, correct things in this breakdown. That's the first measure. If I look at the second measure, you can see I've switched to an F chord. I also have a D chord coming up. And the F notes and the D notes happen right on those chord changes. It's always interesting when you see that. There's a quarter note on that downstroke, which means my next note is going to be a downstroke as well. So down, up, down, up, down, down, up. Once again, measure three starts with an F chord, and I have an F note on beat one. You can see as I switch to the C chord, I do not have a C note on the downbeat, which is very interesting. This measure is full of eighth notes, which means it's just down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. No interesting um, pick strokes to talk about here. Fourth measure, I have down, up, down, up, down, down. So the reason why I have two downs in a row, once again, is because I have a quarter note on beat three. One and two and three, that's beat three. And if I look at the next part, I do have two eighth notes, but they're hammer-on. And moving on to the next line, you can see that that hammer-on is tied to beat one of the fifth measure. So that means that that note just continues ringing. I don't re-hit it, and that's why there's not a pick stroke over a third fret on beat one of the fifth measure. So if I want to move on to the fifth measure, I know that this note's still ringing. One, two, and three, and four. Right, two and three and four and. Now if I look at the next measure, you can see I have some really similar stuff. There's my F chord, my D chord, I'm still in first position. Down, up, down, up, down. Quarter note on B3, down, up for four and. Now in this measure here, the third measure of this line, you can see that I'm gonna have to move up the neck a little bit. So let's work on that. I have three open, it's gonna be a down up, my D string and my G string. 
Now, I'm going to do an F major arpeggio up here. So I'm thinking about like the C chord shape. We're not going to hold down all of that, but that's what's in my mind. And sometimes it's important to know that. So right here, what I'm looking at, it's almost like a little D chord, barring with this finger. I'm just adding that one note there. So going through uh, the shape that I have, I'm barring on fifth fret. On my D string, I'm fretting seventh fret with my ring finger. And then on the B string, I'm fretting sixth fret with my middle finger. You could do that another way if you wanted to. If you wanted to get uh, fancy, if you're not a fan of barring, you can just use up all your fingers, and that's fine too. So I actually play those all in a row with down, up, down, up. And that's the middle of that measure. So adding in the first two notes. You can see as I move to that position, the first finger I put down is seventh fret with my ring finger, and then I put my bar down. The last two notes are eight, six on the B string. They're gonna be down, up. It's really nice if I barred, because then I can just reach out with my pinky. Next measure is over a C chord. You can see I have a full measure of eighth notes. So that's all gonna be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It's great. So the first two lines, we're almost done with the, uh, the C part. <laughs> if we move to the next line, these are uh, some interesting little arpeggios that we have. They descend the strings, but we're still using alternate picking. So you may find this an area where you fumble a lot. It's okay, I felt that way too. They're difficult to play at times, um, but this is what they sound like. So going in four note groupings, it's always gonna be down, up, down, up. There are gonna be notes in the chord. It's the first four notes, G chord. Next four notes feel like a D7 chord. See, so yeah, I'm using my index finger, my middle finger, and my pinky. Next one is for a C chord. Now I use my pinky again there, but if you wanted to, you could use your ring finger. I find it less of a stretch like that. The very last four note grouping is over a D chord. And then I have this G run. Right? The interesting thing about this G run is that it's syncopated. So normally when you would play a G run, it would sound like this. Now it's the open A string that happens just a hair earlier, and that's the syncopation. If I had to count it the traditional way, it would be like this. One and, and three and four and. One and, and three and four and one. This last measure of the intro or C part here, um, you can see I've switched to a C chord. The C chord is debatable. Um, you definitely don't have to play it. It could be some other kind of dominant function, or it could just be a G chord still. I've seen a couple different answers uh, around online, and I've seen lots of people do different things in performances, so don't take that too seriously. <laughs> but what happens there is a quarter note, downstroke, and then down, up, down, up, down, up. It's just a nice little uh, pickup phrase. Playing the whole intro all the way through sounds like this. We got one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and. actually see in the syncopated G run, I just got my pick strokes backwards for a second, but I fixed it. We kept going. Not a big deal. Let's look at the actual A part now. We can see that the uh, first measure is kind of barren, right? That first note lasts for three beats, and if you don't count that correctly, if you don't feel that correctly, you're going to have a bad time. So let's make sure we feel that. One, two, three, four, and. It's really important. You might not think that's important, and you want to rush through that held note, but don't, make sure that you're feeling how long that is. One, two, three, four, and. 
third fret on the B string, uh, second and first fret on the G and B strings, and those are going to be down ups. Moving on to the next measure of the A part. I have one and two and three and four and full measure of eighth notes, all going to be down up, down up, down up, down up. And um, nothing too difficult in the fretting here, all open in second fret. As we move on, we have an F chord. We play that F note. Once again, full measure of eighth notes. Still thinking to myself in first position. There's first fret, second fret, third fret. Those are the fingers I'm going to use. Last measure, open D string. Lasts for three beats once again. So one, two, three, four, and. Make sure you're feeling those rests. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Let's keep going. One and two and. Right, see the beginning of this measure is just a bunch of eighth notes. We know that it's going to be down, up, down, up. We're still in this first position. Good time. We do have to slide up for this next part. That's reading on into the second measure of this line. And thinking about that, we're going into the exact same shape. It's still this. It's still up the neck where we already went. So uh, don't stress out about it. Don't think that it's so much. You can definitely do this. So one and two and, and that's down, up, down, up. The next two notes are also down, up. They're also eighth notes. You just slide up. Now I know that it just says slide up from seven, but I'm doing it from third fret, if that helps. That's a quick slide. The next notes that we have moving into the next measure are up, down, up. And it's that little F chord still. And now putting down my bar. Right, I have up, down, up, down, up. And that's all the time we're going to spend up there. So those two measures together sound like this. One and two and three and, and one and, and three and four and. A little syncopation there can get a little tricky. Make sure you're feeling that correctly. Feel free to play those measures a couple times with me. Moving on, moving on to the third measure of this line where we have the C chord. I can see we have a full measure of eighth notes, so it's going to be down, up, down, up, down, up. Here we go. Continuing, I see the same thing. Still first position. Don't have to change anything. Now, as I move on to the next line, you can see... Once again, I have a note that lasts a little bit longer. This one lasts a beat and a half. So one, two, and. That's why I'm coming in on an upstroke, because it lasts not a full beat, not two full beats, but a beat and a half, which means that it's taking up a down, up, down, right? So because it lasts that long, I have to come in on the upstroke. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. It might help you if you think of this phrase as uh, like part of Gold Rush, because that's what it feels like. <laughs> At least to me, right? It reminds me of Gold Rush. Moving on, let's uh, hop forward to that F chord, because I don't see anything else fancy that we need to talk about. We've already seen this measure before, as long as as well as this measure. But we got to make sure that we keep counting that note for the right duration. So when I'm looking at that D chord, I see one, two, three, four, and gonna help you so much. <laughs> this should also look familiar as we move on. One and two and three and and one and and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. That's uh, already a line that we covered, right? We just get it again. So let's do the whole A part together. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Good job. So let's move on to the B part. All right, here we go. So once again, we have some interesting rhythmic stuff. 
we have one and and three and four and one and and three and four and make sure you're feeling that right right um, if you're thinking about this slide the one that we did earlier from three to seven on the D string it was a very quick slide this slide is not so it takes up two eighth notes so we got to make sure that we hear the slide in between one and one and and three and four and we're gonna do that one more time here we go three four one and and three and four and sure that's all right <laughs> this is a little bit of a cross picking style pattern but we're still using alternate picking um, in this measure here we go down up down up down up down up i'm holding this c7 chord shape down think of it as like an a chord turn it into an a7 it's kind of what it looks like when i say a chord i'm just referring to the shape too it's like an a shape turned into an a7 shape so when i hold it down i really just hold down those three strings it's normally something like this. I got my pinky, I got my ring, I got my index. Five, three, five on D, G, and B. Moving on where it says D chord on this line, third measure. One and, and three, and four, and. Once again, this slide takes up a little more time, right? One and, and three, and four, and. Now, this measure is the one that might cause you a lot of trouble because the syncopation is really interesting. I have one and, one and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. And the pick strokes are down, up, down, down. Really easy to mess that up. If you want, you can straighten this out and just play four quarter notes all downstrokes. One, two, three, four. And if that works better for you, go ahead and do it. If you want to nail the syncopation though, one and three, four. One and two, three, four, right? Beat two is that rest, it's that hole. We don't want to step in it and we don't want to shorten it. Cool, moving on. We're gonna finish the B part. Um, this line is crazy, right? This is the coolest part of the tune. And uh, it's all the wild stuff that you hear. And it's got some time signature changes. Let's try to work those out. When it says three, four there, that means we have three quarter notes in these measures. So they would just be counted one, two, three, one, two, three. We don't have any fours. When it moves back to four, four, that means we got four beats in the measure again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When we have a measure of two, four, it means we only have two beats in the measure. One, two. So knowing that, if I just count the whole thing for you, it sounds like this. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and triple a four and one and two and three and four and one and two and that would be B1 of the next line. So going through that carefully, I'm basically sliding into the top part of a C chord. Two and three on my a string and my D string is what I'm sliding into. And that's one and, that's a downstroke. Now these notes here, uh, two and three and, make sure that's down, up, down, up. You should just be fine though. Um, I end up in second position when I slide in, by the way. Now my index finger is over second fret. And as I move into the next measure, I actually use my middle finger. I jump my middle finger down. But I stay in second position. This finger moves up for a second, but I keep myself in second position, my index finger over the second fret. As I move into the third measure, I have this downstroke slide again. This time I'm truly moving into third position. One and, right, downstroke. One and, two and. So down, down, up. This triplet, hammer on pull off triplet, three, five, three. Just a downstroke. And beat four, four, and that's a little bit of a stretch for some of you. But back in first position, first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. It's going to be my pinky that has to grab that. Next four, four measure. Starts on the open D string. We're playing over a D chord. Love when that happens. Here we go. One, and two, and three, and four, and playing out of second position. And you can see that because it's a full measure of eighth notes, I'm just playing down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Looking on to my measure of two, four. I only have two beats. I have to move back to first position to hit them. One and two and. 
because I have that first fret note, I have to scoot my hand back. So that's the whole B part. Let's see if we can play it together. Here we go. One and, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One and, and three, and four, and one, and three, four. One and two, and three, one and two, and three, and one and two, and triple of four, and one and two, and three, and four, and one and two, and three. <laughs> Once again, this last note that I'm hitting, third fret on the B string, that is the first note of the next measure, and we're going to see that right now as we look forward. But here's the funny thing. As we look at this next section, it may look very familiar to you because we already covered it. Remember, the intro was also the C part. So this, you've already played it before. Let's take a look at it again. I'm going to go ahead and count our way through it, but uh, should be no surprises here. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. Four and one, two, and of my pick strokes that time. <laughs> That's the whole tune. Alright, so if you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, you know what you can do. You can comment, like, subscribe. All of those things let YouTube know that you like this content, and it means that YouTube will recommend it to more people. So I really appreciate when anyone does any of those things. If you want to go a little bit further, you should check out my website, listenswithmarcel.com. Like I said, a big update has come through. The site is like a brand new site. It's so nice. There's so many articles and tabs, and all of the videos are on there too now. Of course, there's merch. You can sign up for Skype lessons. Really appreciate if you checked it out. Anyway, I'll see you next Wednesday.